I'm going to start off with a pretty difficult question, I feel like. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Would you rather never be able to read a book again or never be able to listen to music again? So, of course, I have to ask some caveats here. So for the book, is that like all literature? Like I can't get on a – like I can't have an ebook. Well, I feel like that's like using a loophole. Like it's very no books or no music. Can I listen to audiobooks? No books or no music. <laughs> well, An audiobook is... is not music. Well, it could be. What if there's music on in the background? <laughs> what audiobook do you know that has music on in the background? Well, I hate to say it then. I've got to not read a book and then my career is going down the tube, but I really enjoy music. <laughs> I know. That's what I was really struggling with. I was like, man, I can't like read to get smarter or just read for enjoyment. But I really don't know what I would do without music. I would I would struggle a lot without music. Yeah. I don't like I mean, I don't even know if you could go a day without music. I would be willing to try. OK. I think I'd have a really rough go of it, though. Yeah. Like zero music at all throughout my yeah, day. You should do it tomorrow. You plan on running, right? You should start tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Any physical activity would would become quite a bit more difficult. Like runs. You could listen to your audiobooks instead. Like even in the breath work that I'm doing in the in the sauna, I'm listening to music. Oh my gosh. So I'm SOL. I unfortunately have to ditch my career path and go with no books. No books. Are you in agreement? I, I I don't know what I would do without music. I would find a loophole. I guess I would end up uh cheating and doing audiobooks <laughs> or finding the songs that were like teaching you stuff <laughs> something yeah i'd have to find a way yeah or i'd make the songs myself <laughs> <laughs> All right. what, from what literature i have no idea you don't know you're illiterate uh so you said you had a really good would you rather oh for i do me. i do i wind do. it up here okay you can only pick one you can only wash one of these things for the rest of your life you can either wash your bath towel or your bed sheets. Bed sheets. You're going to use that swamp ass bath towel for the rest of your life. One bath towel. If you clean yourself in the shower, then how does the towel get dirty? Um, I don't know the logistics of that, but when I smell that towel after a couple of uses, I mean, I don't that like boy to, dirty. I don't like to use a towel more than once. Me either. But I really could... Can you fathom being on the same bed sheets for the – that makes me want to throw up a little bit for the well, rest the of your thing. life. I, I had a roommate in college, and if he's listening to this, he's going to be so upset. But this boy never washed that. He used the same towel and just threw it over the, the rack every time, and that thing stunk so bad. And so from experience, I'm going to have to figure out a way to not do the bath or to not do the bed sheets and either wear gloves and sweatshirts and sweatpants and socks to bed so that it's never I mean, touching you me. You get bent out of shape when we go more than four days without changing the bed sheets. I understand that. But I think that the <laughs> the bath towel would end up being a larger problem. Really? Do we want to test this out? In no, real I don't. Time? I, no, no, no. This is not one that I actually want to bring into my real life here. Okay. Um, both would be miserable. They're not, you know, a great selection between the two. That's what makes a good would you rather. Um but I think that I'm choosing to never wash my bed sheets again. Okay. Well, we're in separate. So you're pretty headstrong on the towel. More than the bed sheets. Like that's going to really, and you with allergies, that means that, well, at least the situation is if you, maybe I'm I'm thinking backwards a little bit. So if we, if we were, to, if I were to say I'm never going to wash my bed sheets again, first, the dogs would never be allowed on the bed, period. Ever. ever. And then second. The thing is, is that I would have to shower and put on new clothes before I went to bed like every night. Yeah. But if you're since saying I could have, have however many bath towels I wanted, yeah. then it wouldn't really matter. Stock up the bath towels. But then what's the end? Like, how do you take care of one towel if you're going to do the sheets? I take it into the shower with me after every second shower to get it all soaped up. And then I kind of like air dry. Um for one shower. That seems like quite the crisp loophole that you found there. Yeah. So you are washing it. Well, not technically. 
what? Not technically. Yeah. You're getting it soaked and with soap and then. Well, that's all my body is out of the shower anyways. Wet. Well, it's not soapy because I washed it off. But like what if one time I just get out of the shower and I haven't washed off all the soap and I'm still drenched? Then I'm using the towel and that's kind of like self-cleaning the towel. <laughs> that is fascinating. I think to not break the rules, the only way to go about the towel would be as soon as you dried off, you immediately hung it up. Yeah, you would, you would have to. And like blowing a fan on it so it dries as soon as humanly possible. Yeah. And then that's probably the only way that you could manage it. But you'd have to take such good care of that towel. Think about how raggedy that towel would be just after a year of just like <laughs> using it every time. Think how raggedy your sheets would be after never, ever washing them. Yeah, that would be rough. Well, but if I can't wash them, who's to say I can't replace them? <laughs> Another loophole by Susu. You just got to think harder. Can't get one past you. No, you cannot. <laughs> I got a great would you rather for you. Okay. Would you rather all songs exist, but they are all performed by Pitbull, or only one Pitbull song exists, but it's performed by all artists with their own interpretation of it? I think I'm picking... The one Pitbull song. One song for the rest of your life. With different interpretations, yes. One song. Instead of Pitbull singing, I, I'm not a huge Pitbull fan. Yeah. His like tone and like how he aggressive. sings. Aggressive. They're he very reminds aggressive. Me of Andrew Tate. That's an interesting comparison. I would not have put them in the same camp. They don't like remind you of each other like physically? Mm, well, I guess they're both bald and they both wear those uh, particular sunglasses. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying, like, I don't know anything about Pitbull's personality at I all. I don't either. I, I don't even know if I could. I don't even. I've never seen, like, an Instagram post of his. I mean, Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> the last thing I heard from Pitbull was when we were in Mexico, what, three years ago? I couldn't name a Pitbull song right now, probably. I'm just saying that when we were in Mexico three years ago, there was one of the biggest concerts I've ever seen in my life there, and it was for him. And they had... <laughs> banners that were everywhere for this man and the buses were covered in just pitbull advertising why am i not remembering this at all I'm it's not, a very vivid I'm memory not for me you. i'm just like no i i remember getting to the resort song is the song that's just like forever i could not name one pitbull song that's what i'm saying exactly so then let other people just but interpret like, don't it. you think that at one point if pitbull was singing all the songs that he would try to you know mix it up a little bit. Well, here's the thing. If you're not a Pitbull fan, do you think that it is the words that you don't like or how he's singing? Both. Well, that's an interesting take. <laughs> it's probably the second one. You don't like how he's singing and that his voice annoys you, right? So then you are the one option. Neither of us can name a Pitbull song. Obviously, we don't even like the words of the song. So I think that my decision is the best one because then you're getting everyone's interpretation of that one song. So at least you're hearing other people. I don't think I could just listen. <laughs> I just made a guarantee that I would take music over reading ever again. So now I'm really, I'm stuck to the listening to yeah. music. Clubs I'm sure as hell, wild. I'm not listening to just Pitbull for the rest of my life. So I'm going with the other option. <laughs> the clubs would be wild. Just no, like they the would be same terrible. Song. <laughs> I do not think they would be good. Uh, I just like, I neither. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do. Yeah. Gotta pick. No, well, I would probably pick the um, one song, but performed by all artists. I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> Concerts, what would they even be anymore? I feel like music would lose its excitement. There'd be quite a lack of individuality. I would really hate that. Yeah, it would suck. Well, good thing that's not real life. All right. So, another one here that is, it's puzzling, honestly. What turns a walk into a hike? Elevation. You think? Yeah, I would say so. Okay. What do you think? I was thinking probably like hills and or elevation. Well, I mean, hills and elevation would be the same category. Technically. <laughs> <laughs> do you th do you think that you need to have like hiking? There's, like there's <laughs> like there's changes when like we're walking over to like my parents. Like there's hills, but I'm not like oh I'm like changing elevation here. I am. I'm like damn. This is. But you wouldn't be like this is a hike. You'd be like this is a walk. Walking to your parents is a hike. That is a <laughs> that is a haul over there. I get so exhausted. is it that all hikes are walks, but not all walks are hikes? Sure. I don't like analogies like that because then it's like, what are we even talking about? <laughs> <laughs> exactly what we're talking because what what would you say you're doing during a hike i you're am walking. i'm hiking 
<laughs> You're walking. I'm walking up a hill. Yeah, or walking. Mount, or mountainside that I'm hiking up. So the big thing you say is elevation that changes it. Yes, a significant elevation. The need for hiking boots. The, the Yeah, the necessity of, of hiking boots, um, potentially a backpack, a beverage, some snacks. I think all these things kind of like build into the legitimacy of a hike. All right. Because you're not just going to go on a hike. Well, I guess you could um, like a day hike with nothing. Like you're just going to go no backpack. You could pull a Katie <laughs> <laughs> and just decide to hike for hours in Hawaii with one water bottle and nothing else. That is an extremely bold decision. And um, I think flip flops were maybe involved or no, I knew jean shorts were involved. It's but. been a minute since we've been told that story. But yeah. <laughs> So, you know, that was something that extra things weren't brought on to it. But it so was did they a call it a, did they call it a walk? I don't know. Only time will tell. Here, let's call them up. <laughs> <laughs> According to a recent survey, 71% of women said they want to increase their glute size. And I get it because I was a part of that 71% until I got my hands on the PD glute program. It is a 16-week program, but we have the first four weeks available for free. And just in case you don't believe us, you don't have to just take my word for it. Take Nicole's word, who said, this 12-week program is unreal. I'm a trainer myself, but holy shit. This glute program is a mind blown emoji. I have never felt my glutes engage this much. Or take Kenzie's word for it, who said, the workout has been challenging, but straightforward, which is great. I have always loved training legs, but never had a clear plan. So this has been very beneficial. I've seen a noticeable difference in my glutes and legs. It's kind of crazy how well it's been working. So head to the show notes below to access the first four weeks of the PD glute program for free and get results like Nicole, Kenzie, and the thousands of others who have said the same. All right. So let's get into some other questions here. How did you become a coach or what made you want to become a coach? What made me become a coach? So I have talked about this a number of times on the podcast. Uh, Josh Wildeman, who is my strength conditioning coach from high school and even before then, was a fantastic mentor to me. And as I saw him in his field of work, that was the really the first instance that I was like, I want to do that. Because before then, it was just like athletics and I saw professional athletes and I would say, I want to do that. But outside of it, I don't think that there was ever a situation where I was like, this would be something I would personally want to do until I saw Josh in his element and really um, having that opportunity to work with the athletes. And so that was my first inkling that I was like, I think I would really enjoy coaching. And then I went down an avenue of thinking I wanted to be a, um, an 80. I had a short stint of that, but then it moved quickly back to coaching. And then as I was in college, we started a YouTube channel and we're just documenting the process of uh, what it was like to be training and going to school and doing all that. And then that led me to an opportunity where individuals were reaching out, wanting to have training provided. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is, this is the opportunity. And as soon as I started working with just that first few amount of clients, whether it be in person, whether it be um, online, I was like, I love this. I love the opportunity of being able to help someone and then being able to see the change, like that their life is better or that you're making that impact right away. And so coaching has always been something that I was very interested in. I was always around, obviously. But then as the opportunity presented itself in college, I was I was hooked literally from the, the get-go. You know, it's funny that you ever thought that you wanted to be an AD because that honestly seems like the worst job for you now knowing you. Easily. As soon as I did the internship, I was like, <laughs> this is the opposite of what is good for me. Like, because you're not actually involved in being in the sports. You are just involved in communicating with them all to book everything. And imagine you having to book like 20 different sports and keep that all together. That would be, be miserable. I when I first, before I did the internship, I was only uh, only seeing like the networking side and them being cool with like all the coaches and yeah. all that. And I was like, that seems awesome to me. <laughs> and then once I got into the office and started doing all the grunt work for the athletic director I was working for, I was like, this is 
absolutely not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful that I did that internship. <laughs> did you ever want to be like a strength and conditioning coach for like a team or a professional team? Well, that was, I mean, while I was in college, I wasn't 100% sold on the fact of physique development being the thing. And so as I finished college, my first gig out of school, I would say, was working at the university. So I worked with the volleyball team and the softball team um, for their strength conditioning, which was a ton of fun. And I loved that. And the the one large drawback was the, the timing that it entered my life was when we were, I was wanting to propose to you and we were living six hours apart. And so I had that kind of looming over my head, but I also understood from a strength and conditioning standpoint is that your job is not necessarily dictated off of the quality of your work. It's very dictated off of the quality of what they put on the court or on the field. And so if they don't perform on the field, you are running a risk of your job as well as moving your family to different places. And it's a, it's a job that is not well paid and it's also not very well guaranteed. And so those aspects were big negatives for me. And that was when I finished that first time of, of doing that job, of there, that season, I very quickly made the decision of like physique development is going to be what I put everything into. And then that was when I pivoted that, I proposed to you, and then the rest is history. The rest is history. That's right. Uh, with becoming a coach at the time that you did it, I mean, that was almost 10 years ago. It wasn't as popular as it is now. How did it feel like even taking that leap to be like, I'm going to do this thing? Because I know, and I'll talk about like my experience, but like my parents were like, can you even like pay your bills with that? Like, what does that all entail? Because it was something that they were used to hearing about? Um, I w the things that come to my mind when I first started was people making fun of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just kind of the reality of the situation because the internet was, was definitely popping, but it wasn't something that you were, especially like my friends or people that I was around was like putting myself out there yeah. and uh, certainly wasn't offering a service by any stretch of the imagination. And really the only people that came to mind or that were doing it at the time, Lane Norton was having a very successful um, coaching business at that moment, as well as Raymond, who is the online coach. Um, both of them were two inspirations for me at at the time of like, you can do this and do well at it um, and, and have a lot of success in those different things. So uh, my parents were not overly on board. I will say that my dad has always been someone who is like, whatever you want to do and you're going to be passionate about and work hard at, I am behind you on it. My mom is the one where it's like, huh, you, you need to pick a safer job. I would say up until like the last five years mm -hmm. that she even even maybe less than that, she's always been like, you should go back to school so that you can teach. Like she always wanted to, she thought I would always be like a college professor was the thing that she always thought was going to be the the gig for me. Um, so I didn't have a, a, a ton of support, but I also didn't have like a ton of friends at that time. And so it was a good period for me to just like dig in and go all in um, on what I believed I was capable of doing. Um, and and the, the few friends that I had were very supportive of what I was was doing. Um, and then I had my grandfather as well, who was like a, a big push for me to, to do it as well. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Uh, for myself, for becoming a coach, I actually went to college for broadcast journalism, and I had done that all through high school. So I was on like the school news and was a part of like filming videos, editing videos. So I've always loved the video side of things and being able to speak on camera. And I think that that helped a ton within my skill set. Went to college and was doing that. And then the more that I learned from my journalism teachers about what it looked like to be a journalist, of if I was going to be on air, that it was likely going to be waking up at two or three in the morning to get there to start the news at 5 a.m. and have this crazy schedule and also have to be in dress clothes all of the time and be put together. And then when I learned about like writing articles, it was just like 
when I thought about how I wanted my life to go, it wasn't really clicking into what I wanted. And so there was a big period where I was really unsure of what I wanted to do. And it was kind of, I was like, well, I'm going to then pursue like sideline reporting because I really enjoy sports and I, I don't want to do the news, but I want to do reporting. And so uh, as I got into college, the first year I did get into going to the gym more, especially because I just felt uncomfortable in my own body. And it was a time where I felt like in high school, I felt so swayed by other people's opinions. And within going to college, it was like, these people don't know me. I can be whoever I want to be. And so it was something where I was getting into trying to feel more confident and feel better about my body and found some friends that were into fitness. And it had never like stuck for me before. It was something that I was always like, go really hard for a week or two and then fall off and then like try to like clean things up, so to speak, and then fall back off. And I even made fun of people who had kind of figured it out because I was like, no one's really happy doing that. Like I'd rather just eat whatever I want and do whatever I want. And then when I got into like training more and more and got into my fitness journey, I was like, man, I, I really enjoy this. Like I would love to just this be my job. But then again, looking at the life of a personal trainer, like at a gym, it wasn't the most alluring to me of what it was going to be for what my lifestyle was. And at that time, I was watching people on YouTube, still a big YouTube fan over here, uh, and following other people. And it was people like, I mean, Max Tuning, the online coach was one of them as well, uh, Amanda Bucci, Marie Wold, and just seeing them do something and talk about like being able to support themselves financially. And that was what I was looking for is how can I have the lifestyle that I want and support myself while also doing something I'm extremely passionate about. And I had never found an answer before. It was always that I am sacrificing one aspect to be able to at least make one or two of the other aspects work. And so then I was just like, I'm going to go ahead and get my CPT and work towards that and uh, ended up deciding to graduate early because I wasn't enjoying my time at college anymore. And I was just like, I want to finish up. But I had already gotten so far into my degree. It was like, it doesn't make sense to switch and to keep paying off this money when it like for getting your CPT, like you don't have to go to college, you can just get your CPT. And so I finished up my degree early and then got my CPT, started training some people in person just to get experience. And I was posting on Instagram at that time. And it was similar to you of like, I was making YouTube videos and posting on Instagram and people were reaching out of asking if I could help them. And so then I started coaching and I absolutely fell in love with it of just being able to exactly what you said of like make a difference in people's lives, be an impact, be able to get to a point where like I had felt so lost previously and being able to get to a spot where I understood my body, understood how to make it work for me and being able to show and teach other people how to do that. It just made me so happy and over the moon and that I got to do it from home in sweats made it even better <laughs> uh, that I could do that. So it was something where it it wasn't like, oh, this grand plan of, oh, I'm going to become this coach. It was, I kind of fell into it and I'm so glad that I did and kind of was in the circle that I was at that time to just be able to go all in on it. And I too didn't have a ton of friends. I had finished college and moved home and was living with my parents trying to, to make it work. And I was waitressing in the morning and I would be waitressing at 5 a.m. And then I would then do, um, I was at a place that was like a breakfast lunch place. So it closed at like one. And so then I had the rest of the day to work on being a coach. And so that's what I did is just I literally waitressed until I could be at a point that I could support myself within coaching and then went full time with coaching. Um, and that's when you and I got married uh, and were able to start doing it together. What a cool story. Yeah. <laughs> So when it comes to uh, being a coach to now you have become a business owner, what has it been like going from being a coach to a business owner? Um, <laughs> challenging. <laughs> very, very challenging. I I love 
coaching the the back end of things is something that I struggled with a bunch and uh, was a, a big thorn in my side, especially when we first got started because I was so just focused on coaching. I would say that I'm still tremendously focused on coaching, but have allowed space to better facilitate the opportunity of leadership as well as um, building out a, a staff and a team that I love and, and that I'm proud of and, and one that really works collaboratively together. Um, so the, the process of, of being a, a greater business owner relative to just being a coach is a, a one that I still think I'm in the absolute weeds of. I don't think that I've, I, we've made tremendous progress. I would say more you than myself. <laughs> But um, one that I think is going to be a lifelong journey. And if I can speak to anyone who's in that transition period of, of going from just coaching to having your own business and staff is that it's always going to suck in some way. There's not really a time in which it's like, oh, finally, I have done it. You're going to have checkpoints and there's going to be moments of like, okay, I, I have I have overcome that hill. I have conquered that beast of whatever task it was. But the, the payoff that you think you're, you're striving for is not inherently going to come. And it's just a matter of continuing to show up every day and doing the tasks that are asked of you and continuing to do that time and time again over extended periods of time to achieve whatever that payoff truly is. Um, and because I, I think early on for me, I was always just waiting for this moment of like relief, I did it. Mm -hmm. And each time that we would get to different checkpoints, there was not really a relief of, oh, I did it. It's like the next thing is up. Like there's just more things that need to be taken care of. And once I accepted the fact of, I need to be able to personally celebrate each of these milestones for myself, not, not thinking that there's gonna be this emotional payoff, but be present and be like, very proud of myself that I accomplished these things, but it's time to continue on to the next thing because the business continues to go. Uh, once I made that mental shift, that was pivotal for me. Yeah. And I, I think that it's something where like you were owning a business when you were full-time a coach. And then over the past few years, it's transitioned, like you mentioned, of having a staff under you. And so then it's been from you being kind of like a one-man show and being a business owner and a coach full-time to now having these different responsibilities. So what are some of those different responsibilities that you have within being a business owner as compared to, to being a coach? I feel like you're going to better answer this question because <laughs> I often minimize all the things that I do which you are pushing me to be better with. Mm -hmm. So in the big rocks, I've got a uh, roster of clients that I absolutely love working with. That's a large part of every day of every week. Um, I do a lot of the podcasting, the YouTube, and the content side of things. Those are another big part of my day. The other aspects of all the things that I do, you're probably going to better articulate them because I know I do a lot of other things but I, I don't do a great job of acknowledging them. I feel mm -hmm. as though that I, in my mind, say that the content and the coaching is like, that's my thing. And I that's all I focus on. But I'm very, very aware that I do a lot more outside of that. Yeah, I would say like if I'm flashing back to like 2018, like you literally, you were still doing content because you were promoting yourself, but it was like head down and check-ins all day, every day. You mm -hmm. would make your infographics. And then that was basically it. Like you would train and stuff but like that was it. Yeah, that is not my day anymore. Yeah, whereas now like you you do have your head down in check-ins and honestly like I he has a very large roster for the amount of things that he also does on top of it, which you definitely do not give yourself enough credit for that. But you have your roster of clients. Then it's not only idealizing and then actually being on the podcast and the YouTube, which creating content for Instagram can definitely be a large portion of your day. But like for people's days in general, if they're coaches, but committing to being consistent with a podcast and YouTube anyone who has ever tried can really speak to how much work that takes to really go all in on the podcast and YouTube. Again, not just idealizing and scripting and 
presently being on it, but then also the back end of seeing, okay, what is going to be the best for posting this? How does this need to go up? What does it look like for SEO? All that jazz. Um, but then on top of that, you also do a lot of mentorship within our team as a whole of being able to be a go-to for a lot of questions for anyone who has them for their clients, where that's something we really open up for our coaches of being able to um, touch base with you and or I to, to be able to see what they might not be seeing within their client work. Um, but then you you also do a ton within mentorship for other people where you have mentorship for other coaches that want to be able to get mentorship. You've also done it for other teams of coaches that, that want that mentorship, um, as well as um, doing speaking events and being on other people's podcasts um, and being able to network in that, that regard. Um, and it, it's something where you're also involved in a lot of the meetings that we have when it comes to the admin team, which me meetings like they take up a good chunk of time, um, which is something that I didn't used to understand as much. Um, but I, I feel like I'm missing a ton of things as well. But you you do work on so many aspects of the business um, and being able to, to look at it all and still work at the caliber that you do, I think is extremely impressive. And it it's something where I know that you and I have talked about of like, oh, kind of missed the days when I was just coaching. And I feel that way for sure. And I've I felt that way very recently. Recently of like, man, it would be nice to just be able to answer my client emails, period. Um, but like, then it's like, okay, now we need to see how are things going with the email list? Where are things at with the socials? Where are things at with all of these different plus the aspect of managing a team, which is again, not to be understated either. Um, so I think that it's, it's something where when I look at it from, okay, I'm just coaching versus being a business owner or managing a team, it's just, it, it's a huge leap. And there's so many other responsibilities that come. Because when you're coaching, you're just like, have I responded to my client and have I done a good job? And that's like your task each day, where now it's like, I have a whole list of tasks that I need to do. It's not just answering the check-in, making sure that they have their their programming. It's a, a mile-long list on top of that. Absolutely. What's the biggest change for you or what's the thing that you notice the most? Because I can go down the list of all the things that you do. Um, I don't even know. It's <laughs> It feels like it's like too much to even conceptualize as a whole. It, it's like it, it, I, I just... I would just say that it's a lot to manage a lot of people. Well, I, I think that the the big thing to drive home is that you took the reins of really being a CEO and being the leader of a, a team that we were stripping it down to the bones and basically restarting and um, made the decision that we were going to instill a culture of, of work ethic and working together as a team and a loving environment and one that is, it feels like family. That was the, the big thing that we drove home um, amongst other things, but those were the big rocks. And you took that head on with, with guidance uh, to, to a degree, like you can only be guided so much from mentorship in this realm. Like you've got to be willing to, um, you're still going to be falling on the sword if, if things don't go the way that they're supposed to. Yeah. And so you took that and, and ran with it and were able to have a, a level of confidence that I know at times you were weary of. You weren't, you didn't feel like you, you had it, but you need to show up with it and you continue to do that. Um, and now you're in a place, you know, a year later and being in this CEO role, you could probably say two years later, but really one year later of the, the big work, um, having built out a really amazing team and being able to work with everybody and keep everyone in a place that they know what their task is and that they are understanding of that culture, of that family feel and making sure that they're heard and that everything is taken care of. I mean, I, I have such a, a level of peace in my mind because I know that you have everything taken care of when it comes to the staff and when it comes to the team working collectively. Um, You've also taken on the the approach of all things on the back end, working with our accountant, working with the financial team, and making sure that everything is running efficiently. We had a you and I had a tough meeting yesterday. Yeah, there were some tears. There was there was some raised voices. There was frustration. 
but it's one of those things that we just have to continue to work through and we're learning and, and it is pushing us to be better and working through that adversity is something that you're taking head on. And so I, I can't, I, I could sit here on this podcast for hours and just talk about the work that you do for physique development and how you make this a better place for everyone to work as well as a better place for, for clients to come in and have an experience of getting to the best position within their health, but also being nurtured every step along the way that they have the best possible experience that they could with coaching and that people are able to walk away and say, you know what, physique development treated me right and fulfilled every promise that they made. And you make that work because they can come in and work with me and they're going to have tremendous results, but there's a lot that happens before they sign up. And there's things that will happen after their time working with me that you have nurtured in an environment that they're taking care of from step one to the very end. And you've done that. And so the, the, the list of things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis is, um, as you would probably put it endless, uh, that, that doesn't, uh, ever end uh, in general. <laughs> That's what endless means, man. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's incredible to watch and it's motivating to me because I know that I have to show up with my A game every day. Cause I know you're going to do the same. Well, I, I very much so appreciate that. And that kind of leads into the next question is like, what keeps you you motivated when it comes to the the day to day? And I that's something that you and I have talked about a lot of a big part of my motivation comes from myself, but also you. It comes from the fact that I know someone else is working just as hard to make it happen. And any day that I'm like, I really would rather freaking not do this. It's not only the responsibility of we have a team that we're supporting, but it's I know that you're working just as hard in the other room and you're pushing yourself. And I feel like it would be disrespectful to come with less than my best to each day. And the aspect of being motivated through myself is like, there have been a lot of really hard days in the past two years. And not just personally, like business-wise, there have been a lot of really hard days in the past two years, days that have ended in tears and just feeling lost, feeling like a failure and a multitude of other feelings. But no matter what, throughout everything since 2020, like, I feel like I have been head in, all in, everything for PD. Like, I have a deep, deep belief in myself and my ability to succeed. And even the days that I doubt myself, it's just there's no other answer than I'm going to make this work. And, like, I feel like I have, like, this beating, like, blue orb. And I say blue orb because PD is blue. But, like, this beating blue orb that's just, like, this is going to happen. And again, there are days that I'm like, how? Please tell me, Orb, how the F is this going to happen? But it's like this insane amount. And like you've instilled a lot of it into me of like just self-belief of the, the reason other people haven't succeeded is they stop. Mm -hmm. And like I, the reason I won't succeed will not be because I stop. Like I will keep going because I just believe that I will succeed and that is always the thing like beating inside of me of like this will happen. I love that. I would say very similar because this is my grandmother. <laughs> she had instilled a level of confidence in me from a painfully young age <laughs> that has carried with me into adulthood and, and will beyond and, and I think has impacted people uh, around me as well in a positive manner to believe more in themselves because she instilled, and I would say my mom as well, my mom and my grandmother were very very pushy to me that I was capable of whatever I wanted to do and that I should have the confidence that I can do whatever I want to do. And um, I'm fortunate to have that experience and their guidance to put me in a place where I still to this day believe I'm a, I'm a massive dreamer and I have a lot of amazing ideas and things that I believe physique development is capable of doing and making the impact and helping a, a level of, of people that um, has not been touched yet. And with that belief, those, those things drive me on a day-to-day -day basis because I know that we're capable of them. And it's just a matter of putting in today's work and then the next days to where we're going to get there. And I don't care if it takes me 
10 years, 20 years, 30 years, what I have envisioned for the capabilities of what this company um, is able to do is going to come to life. And I'm willing to uh, sink with the ships to do that. And uh, that would be, you know, in part to the tattoo that I just got on my leg, that is a that is the exact thought process that I have such a level of conviction and belief of what physique development is capable of bringing into this world that I'm willing to go down with it. And so that's, that's been every step of the way. And I'm, there's more to the story that I wish I could tell you all that showcases how much I'm willing to go down with the ships, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but, and maybe one day we'll be able to tell that full story. And, uh, but I, I just, every day I wake up with that reminder of like, what I want to happen is is possible. It's just a matter of putting in the work today. I love that. And I love that you have that mentality because, again, that drives me on the days that I don't have it in myself. It's like you have it. And it might not be enough for us to share, but it's enough for me to see, to then believe. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. Are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing? turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty. I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s, able to grow their glutes with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one -on -one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program because you are awesome and I want you to have this program. I'm going to give you $25 off, making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. Awesome. Well, what advice would you give to someone starting their own business? Start. <laughs> get started and, and don't think that it's going to be the, the perfect scenario and that you've got all of the things figured out because you're never going to. And I, I work with a lot of coaches myself. I work with I work with individuals who are very interested in fitness and through the the time of working with me, they're like, I want to do this. And that's a really cool feeling for me. And the one thing that I always tell them is that do not compare yourself to, to me, use me as an example and take the things that I have talked about and apply them to your coaching. And, and hopefully I can help you avoid some of the downfalls that I had or, or shortcomings and those different things, but really just allowing for yourself to get in the work and taking that messy action is going to be the best possible thing that you can do for yourself, as well as asking questions, reaching out to people that you trust and taking the chance on like, especially now where you've got DMs and, and being able to just reach out to literally anyone. I can open up my phone and send a message to LeBron James if okay. I wanted to. Is he going to respond? Absolutely not. <laughs> but he but could. I, he could. He could randomly see it, you know, by chance. And so you have that opportunity with a lot of people that can guide you and give you um, information that would be tremendously valuable. And I will tell you this, the people are, are passionate about what they're doing want to help as many people as they possibly can and and take it as a compliment that you're even asking the question. And I, I get excited when I have questions come through in my DMs or in the request or whatever of just, you know, general things and being able to make that small help is is huge. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. And I think that the the thing is just believe in yourself and go for it. Like there's a post that I saw or um, there's an account talking about like how you should sell yourself online or uh, I forget what the account is even called, but they basically show you the most ridiculous thing that people are promoting and selling and being like you're sitting at home not promoting yourself when someone is promoting themselves and making money with something that literally like cuts their poop in half. Like, go and be proud of what you do and go out there and sell it. Like, that's something where I am so glad that I just put myself out there and just rode hard for myself. And you mentioned of getting made fun of a lot. Like, I got made fun of a ton. Like, 
people I thought were my friends, people I lived with literally putting me in group chats and making fun of my YouTube channel. Like it was something that really sucked to go through. But if I just listened to what they said or was always so afraid of like what other people thought of me, I wouldn't be sitting here today. And it's the the aspect of just believing in what you're selling, believing in what you're going after and just taking that with you because you're you're not going to fail if you keep believing and to keep going. You gotta keep going. Just gotta keep going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if you were to wake up and you're the last person on earth, what are you doing? Last person on earth. I'm probably starting the day off with a good workout and run. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Alex answer. Um, I'm probably, I honestly am probably starting my day with that. And then, um, gosh, last person on earth. Do I, like, what food do I have available to me? Um, you're the last person. No one else has taken anything. Well, I I'm, don't know what the circumstances are that the world ended. If but. I've got my current abilities, I am SOL because I have no ability to farm at this moment. And uh, don't think if it just ended today that I'd randomly be able to learn that tool. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I'm going out hunting for food for my best ability there. Hopefully I have some weapon of sorts because me going out there with like a bow and arrow or shiv is not going to work out. <laughs> Um, I don't know. This is a this is a pretty challenging question. I'd probably just like kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> but truthfully, like you, oh you, my God. you can't like you can't continue on. What is do you mean? Thing. Like I could fight the good fight. For what? I can't procreate. I can't have any companionship. You're gonna go mad if you're alone. I just don't think that you would ever know that you're actually the last person. I think that you would always have this small sliver of hope that you're going to find someone else. It's like I Am Legend. I knew you were going to bring that I up. love that movie. Oh, man, do I love that movie. He was had that small sliver of hope. There's another man out there. There's another woman out there that I can help. and that. But he also had a lot of skills that I do not have. Well, I better get working. I, I just like don't think I'm like built for that. <laughs> Like, I don't it, think I'm built for it either. It's but. just like if there's like some sort of like apocalypse, even if there are, it would depend on how bad the apocalypse was. But I just like, I'm not really built for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would try as hard as I possibly could to figure it out, but I wouldn't can myself. Okay. Different strokes for different <laughs> folks. <laughs> I just like, I don't know what things would be if you're the last person on earth. Like, I'm telling you, you're the last person on earth. Yeah, no, I think I'd start it with a workout and a run, though. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> All right, we're going to play a fun little game here to end things off. It is called Dinosaur or Muscle. Okay. Are you ready? I don't know because that makes no sense. I'm going to say something and you're going to tell me, is it a dinosaur or is it a muscle? That was a better description. All right. Sartorius. That is a muscle. Correct. <laughs> Platysma. I'm going to say that's a muscle as well. Correct. Look at you, two for two. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this one out phonetically just so I could make sure. Uninlaja. Uninlaja. Are you sure that's how that's said? Not 100%. <laughs> I'm going to say dinosaur because I'm not even sure what that was. Correct. <laughs> three for three. Okay. Longissimus. That is a muscle. Correct. Wow. You're so smart. <laughs> Corrugator. Corrugator? I'm going to say dinosaur. Muscle. What is it? Corrugator. C-O-R-R-U-G-A-T-O-R. -R -R I think it's in the throat if I'm remembering correctly. Okay, I'll take your word for it because go ahead. Okay, Proceris. Proceris. Hmm. This is a guess. I, did, I do not know. The word does not ring a bell. Everything else has actually rang a bell. This one, I'm going to go with dinosaur. No. Wrong. Muscle. Oh, wow. What is it? I didn't write I that down. I feel like down. you should have written down what the muscle was. I'll have it pop up on the screen. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure David is <laughs> <laughs> going to get all those links for sure. <laughs> Multifidus. What? Multifidus. Multifidus? Yes. Muscle. Yes. <laughs> I was like, you got to get that one. I knew that one. Okay, Hesperonis. <laughs> Hesperonis? 
Mm-hmm. Um, well, we haven't had a dinosaur in a while, so I feel like <laughs> this is AB. We've got to be getting some dinosaur in here. <laughs> You're correct. <laughs> Good job. There's one on here I'm really unsure how to pronounce I'm here. I'm so but excited. Ramphoricus. Ramphoricus. Yep. Ramphoricus. Ramphoricus. Muscle. Dinosaur. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cephoderma. Cephoderma. That's a muscle. No? That's a dinosaur. <laughs> wow. What did you end up getting? You got me tweaking now. My brain is all, because it's not even the actual word I'm having to also. I'm pronouncing all of these correct. I can't wait. I think what we should do for a short clip is actually take you saying it and then have Google do like the Google voice. Okay. Then it's going to be 100% correct, except for two of them. <laughs> I'm going to say more than two of those. More than two of them? Yeah. Did you hear yourself? Yeah, I sounded great. I let, practiced. Let me read some of them. I practice. Okay. Do you want to read them? I'm done with them. No, I, what I get, like a six out of 10? Do you have I some don't for remember. you? I'm sure you've already prepared and no, I don't have you're going to get 10 me. for 10 and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm no. so much smarter than you. Tell the, tell the audience how smart I am. I don't remember <laughs> how many you got right, but you got a few right. I think it was like six of 10. Sure. It was not good. It's disappointing. I need to get back into the anatomy books. Yeah, get better. I think it would have been more helpful if you would have provided what the muscle was. Like after you guessed. Yeah, like after the guess was like, this is located in the throat, as you said. Oh, you're going to go ahead and look all of them up. All right. The sartorius is going to be right here. That's not going to be seen in any of those cameras. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see the... All right, guys. The This episode has concluded. We hope no. that you have thoroughly enjoyed this Q&A. Make sure that you share it with a friend. Comment what your favorite part of this was, if you got all those muscles right, and uh, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next episode. Peace out. Bye.